Pregnancies are usually filled with a range of experiences for those expecting. Mothers have to deal with morning sickness and other pains that come with carrying a baby. But it ultimately results in delivering a bundle of joy and this is wonderful enough and surely the only thing that genuinely matters. Sometimes these things don't go according to plan and it can be a nightmare for moms. And such is the story of a mother who was told her child had a rare thanatophoric dysplasia even before the baby was born. Also, if you have not done so already, please subscribe to our channel and click that notification bell to get inspired by these real-life stories every day. Now back to the story. Melissa Corson had already been a mother once before she found out she was expecting another baby on January 27, 2019. She was quick to pass the good news to her husband, who was quite delighted at the news. Doctor appointments were going pretty smooth and she had to go every four weeks at first. It didn't take long for Melissa to take a blood test and then have a scan that would determine the sex of the baby as a girl. And just like that, plans started on how the couple would bring their new bundle of joy into life and it started with deciding on names. After considering several options, they finally picked what they believed was the perfect one, with Paisley Renee, since she was a girl. Things would soon start looking to get out of hand 20 weeks into the pregnancy. Usually, it's the time when an appointment is scheduled to have an ultrasound and measure the baby and do a number of other checks to make sure the baby is progressing well. For Paisley, it was different. The doctors found it hard to figure out any measurements because she was measuring short. At first, that didn't seem to bother Melissa and her husband much since their daughter could just be short, but that would change when the doctors couldn't say particularly what was wrong with her. At first, our response was, okay, well, we have short people in our family, so no biggie. Then we were scheduled for another ultrasound to get more imaging done on Paisley. Again, they didn't get all they needed and they found that she was still measuring really short. At this point, we were starting to worry a little more as they couldn't really tell us in detail what was going on with our daughter, Melissa recalled. Following that, she was recommended to take specialist appointments to have an in-depth ultrasound that would help to get detailed measurements of all Paisley's bones, organs, fluids, and all other component parts of her body. Right, the doctors could just do this and they would know what's up. But when an appointment like this is known to last up to 3-4 hours, you're left fearing the worst. And this was exactly how the couple felt knowing something could be wrong with their unborn daughter. Especially since it was nothing like they felt when she was having her other child. On the day of the appointment, the couple got to see the pictures of their daughter again. And when they would be through with the ultrasound, they had to wait patiently before they got news they'd rather not have heard from the doctor who said their daughter had a rare case of dwarfism called thanatophoric dysplasia. After they got done with the ultrasound, which took about an hour and a half, we were then directed to sit in a waiting area to see the doctor. The hour we sat there and waited was so tormenting and long because you have no idea what to expect the doctor to find or what is going on, period. We just sat there and embraced each other and prayed to God that everything would be okay with our daughter, said Melissa. They finally called us back to see the doctor, and from the look on their faces, the news he was about to tell us wasn't good at all. His words were, Your daughter Paisley has a severe, rare form of skeletal dysplasia, or dwarfism, called thanatophoric dysplasia, or TD. He couldn't even get that sentence out of his mouth before my husband and I broke down in tears. Melissa recalled, Thanatophoric dysplasia is a severe skeletal disorder characterized by extremely short limbs and extra folds of skin on the arms and legs. The term thanatophoric is from a Greek word which means death-bearing because the condition causes a narrow bell-shaped chest, which doesn't allow the lungs to grow properly. Usually, children with this condition are stillborn or die shortly after birth from respiratory failure. Though there have been cases where some actually survive, though they don't usually live long enough. With this, you can surely expect that the news didn't sound at all comforting for Melissa and her husband. To add to their misery, the doctor told them that Paisley might not live through birth or only get to live for a few hours after birth. The doctors are so brutal and give kids no chance when they have a so-called lethal condition. He told us she might not live through birth or she might only live a few hours to days after she was born. Our world turned upside down that day. Now we had to plan for a child that would be medically handicapped for the rest of her life, Melissa recalled. The couple immediately took to researching their daughter's condition as they couldn't just give up on her. Unfortunately, they couldn't find helpful information and instead found out things like the case being a 1 in 20,000 or 50,000 type case, and even with the oldest living survivor at 29 years old. All the appointments after that were stressful for Melissa, surely for obvious reasons, and she had to live through every session praying that her daughter would grow. Her prayers did answer with Paisley measuring much better than she would have been expected to, even when it came to her lungs. 
her limbs ended up measuring around 17 weeks. Her head was always on track, so she had about a 34-week size head, and her little chest only grew to about 20 weeks. So you can imagine how small Paisley was. I got an MRI done so we could see her organs and how her lungs were developing. We were surprised to find out she had 80% lung tissue, which was amazing considering her condition, Melissa said. Despite this, doctors were still quite brutal about the situation, insisting they'd never seen a patient survive thanatophoric dysplasia, especially for Paisley's age. And not only did it sound negative to Melissa, she just couldn't understand why they had to bring down her hopes like that. Finally, on August 28, 2019, Melissa and her husband would then get to meet their daughter and yeah, she did survive and even weighed much more than expected. About that day, Melissa said, We both were scared because Paisley was here six weeks early and we had no idea what to expect. All we wanted to hear was her cry. And guess what? She let out several cries, letting us know she was here and doing okay at that point. She weighed five pounds and two ounces when they thought she would only weigh three. They rushed her to the NICU and got her set up on the ventilator. We were so happy she made it through birth, but we still had no idea what her life had in store. After several tests, it would then be confirmed that Paisley did have TD and she eventually had to be put on an oscillator vent before her case got critical. And what had started and is usually a wonderful week for mothers turned out to be, in her own words, the hardest week of her life. They sent off her blood work to later confirm it was TD. She scared us and almost passed a few days later. So she had to be put on the oscillator vent, which is the last resort for any hospital. She also had to have nitric gas to help with her CO2 reading. I didn't get to hold my baby girl until a week later. It was honestly the hardest week of my life in an emotional roller coaster. You feel defeated as a mother when you can't hold your own child, said Melissa. After a while on the oscillator, Paisley was then moved on to a regular hospital vent and continued growing well until the hospital could no longer do the surgeries she needed. She was then transferred to Children's Healthcare of Atlanta, where she would undergo tracheostomy surgery because she could still not breathe on her own. And despite all these stress and travails, it was already many days after birth and Paisley was surviving despite what the doctors had thought. This was so much on our little girl, but she is a fighter and got through it. We, on the other hand, were a hot mess because our baby girl was only two months old and she was already having these huge surgeries. Like I said, little did we know our precious Paisley is a fighter, Melissa recalled. Paisley eventually did make it home with her parents, though she would have to be dependent on a ventilator for breathing. Melissa recounts that being told that her daughter wouldn't make it was the saddest thing she's had to think of. But in the end, she has God to thank for giving Paisley a huge chance of surviving and defying the odds by living. She said, This journey has taught me to be grateful, to thank God for my little miracle, and to hold everything close to my heart. It was God's plan for this to happen, and we will praise His name through it all and be grateful for everything that comes our way. Melissa also offers advice for parents in the same situation, telling them not to give up. In her words, she said, If I could give advice to any parents out there dealing with similar situations, I would say do not give up on your children. Fight for them and be strong for them. They are dependent on us. Rely on family and friends for comfort. Do not hold your emotions in because it's not healthy and will drive you insane through this process. There are many lessons to be learned from Paisley's story and it is also a story that will serve as an inspiration to many, especially parents who are dealt with having to watch their little cuties struggle at any point after birth. There's surely a place in the world for every baby like Paisley. If you enjoyed this video, kindly give it a thumbs up, leave a comment in the comment section, and share with others. Thanks for watching and catch you in the next one!